Good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to answer a question that I got on this video. How to run 100 regressions without loops in R. Now, just to make something clear, I am not a uh, functional programming supremacist. I am not a racist towards loops. Loops have their place. I just think that in many situations you um, don't need them. There are situations where you will need them and uh, if you're not using them, then you need to, you know, write some perhaps more complex code. However, I wanted to tackle the question I got here from Mike Parrott. Um, if you have a large data set, is copying the data set 100 times to make the rows of your table sensible? So, in the video, I, um, you know, I run 100 regressions and I do that by taking my data set and creating a new table with 100 new um, or 100 copies of the data set and then I mapped a function to um, you know a regression function over this column so let's see if um, le let's see what happens if we do that with a larger data set so I was experimenting I was looking at um, at, uh, at this question and I was trying some stuff and so I came, came up with this code. So what this does at first is I uh, take um, I read in a uh, Excel sheet from the Enron, the infamous Enron database, which contains uh, thousands of, of spreadsheets. Um, this one is one of the largest I found, which is around 40 megabytes um, big, which you know is not huge, but if you read it with XLS X cells, you get a table with one row per cell and in this case it uh, it amounts to uh, quite a large table so I'm reading it and as you see this Excel file in my RAM takes up 2.4 gigabytes which is you know it's not not bad um, let's take a look at the head uh, so if you see it's uh, 21 columns and each cell you know, uh, is represented here and I have uh, values for each cell. Okay, so for example, M2 is uh, not blank and is a numeric, contains a numeric value, which is this one. Okay, so uh, if we take a look at the rows uh, and row Excel, we get 14 million rows, almost 15 million rows. So it's not, it's not small, it's not big data or whatever, but it's still quite, quite big. So if I need to run 100 regressions over that, or 100 plots, or I don't know, whatever, uh, if I duplicate that 100 times, what's going to happen? I have here my um, my system uh, monitor. Um, these are my CPUs here on top, and here, this is my RAM. So I started R, I read in the file, you see that my RAM uh, increased, my RAM usage increased. Now I am around 6.5 gigabytes of RAM of usage. Let's duplicate, let's create a table with 100 times my Excel, and let's see what happens. Let's go back to the system monitor. So, as you can see, my RAM is not moving. Uh, my CPUs here, on, uh, above here, on top, are working, um, but my, my RAM is not doing much. Um, and actually it's already done. If I take a look at my object size, and this really surprised me. So something else I should say is that whatever the, this thing I'm doing here, this is really more of an experiment. I was just trying stuff out. I don't understand everything. So if you guys know what's going on and if you can explain to me, you're more than welcome to do so. Because, and also the solute, the, solution I'm showing you here might not be the uh, best and uh, most elegant way so don't I, I don't know don't use that maybe just yet maybe just um, try to experiment with it as well and I'll try to dig if I understand but if because if you look at the object size so I have 100 times the data frame it's still 2.4 gigabytes and my RAM usage did not move what I think is happening, and I have no clue because I'm not a computer scientist, is that it doesn't really, so running this stuff doesn't duplicate the data frame 100 times. Instead, what I think, what I think is, so if you take a look 
what I think is inside, so I have my 14 million rows data frame we'll repeated 100 times. I think this thing is not the data frame itself, but it's somehow uh, like the address, maybe just a pointer to the, to the data frame. So instead of copying that 100 times, um, when you create a table like that, it just points towards this object to save RAM. I think it's the only explanation I could, could imagine, um, but I don't know. Now let's take this Excel file and let's do two things. Let's add, uh, I want just to count how many blanks there are per data frame. So in this case, it's going to be 100 times the same stuff. But if I had 100 different data frames, well, it could be, uh, it could be different. And then let's run a regression over all my data frames. This is a stupid regression. It's just, you know, regresses row over column, which doesn't make any sense, but it's just to get something there. But instead of running the regression, I quote it. Why? Before uh, filming, I was experimenting and I didn't use quo. So I ran my regression. And what happened there is I ran out of memory and I think what happened is that be to run the regression, the LM function has to get to the data, so it has to instanti instantiate the data frame. So it has to pick it from the memory, copy it, and then run the regression, and then save the result in the data frame. And this happens 100 times. Why? Because mutate and map and, uh, you know, and, and R have no way of knowing that this is going to run 100 times the same regression. So there is no way for, for, R, for R to somehow be smart enough to, you know, just run the regression one time and then just point towards it, right? So this I run out of memory. However, if I quote, what happens is the following. Let's take a look. And also, let's also take a look at the object size. So I'm adding two columns. As you see, it went super fast, first of all. Uh, memory didn't budge. No changes whatsoever. Um, object size is not going to work actually and uh, I think the reason uh, is because I quote this thing and this thing like is some kind of I, I don't think you know that object size is able to know the, the size it's going to take because it's it's a, it's not instant instantiated so this regression if I take a look if I take a look at LREG uh, let's go with LREG1, ah, it's a quasure, okay, so it's just this formula, but it's not the instantiated regression. Now I could save that, now I'm done, let's say, I'm done for the day, okay, I'm not going to run this thing, this was just to experiment, this will also make me run out of memory, because here I inst instantiate my 100 data frames. Now I could save this object, for example, with, uh, you know, save, uh, I'm not going to do it here, but I could save RDS, DF, Excel, and store it somewhere, you know, etc. And maybe I do that because uh, I just wanted to prepare my code, I just wanted to prepare my, my this object, and maybe I will need to get to these regressions later in the future, but maybe not all of them, maybe I just need one, maybe I just need a couple, I have no idea. Again, this could be ggplots, this could be something else entirely, it could be more uh, complex models, it could be, I don't know, some, some random forest or whatever with some tuning and I don't know what, so which could take a lot of time to run, but maybe I don't need to run them all today, I could just, you know, maybe I just need one of those uh, next week, my boss is going to ask me, you know what, uh, pull me out the model for this product or whatever, and so I would instantiate it only then. And how do you do that? Well, here, I, let's say I need model number three, I filter over three, and now I map, or yeah, in this case I map because, you know, if I need two models, it's better to use map. I could, I just map eval tidy on that, and let's see what's going to happen. Let's also take a look at the memory. So you see here the memory starts increasing. I think, why? Well, because the model gets instantiated, and um, and uh, and the regression gets run, and here it is. Here's the regression. Um, what you could do if you need to run everything is you could write a function that uh, would um, grab, let's say, this 
quoted regressions and then just uh, you know uh, run eval tidy over them and then you could use a loop to loop over your data frame over your data structure right and at each at each row it would run the regression and then save it to disk again this is kind of experimental i don't know if this is the best way or if it's a good way so if you have uh, some comments some ideas let me know because this looks interesting but i am not sure if it's the best way to run that so um hope you enjoyed and see you next time